Hello everyone, Rachel Weaver here. I'm on faculty and staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. I've been putting together a series of videos called The Story of a Book in which we ask an author to tell us the story of how their book came to be um, and any sort of you know unexpected things that happened along the way. We have one of our newer Lighthouse instructors, Sarah Gerard, with us to Hi. tell us the story of her novel, True Love, which is coming out July 7th very soon. Congratulations. <laughs> so, um, Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you tell us a little bit about um, some unexpected things that happened along along the way. Sure. So, um, well, I guess I'll just tell you what True Love is about first. Um, it's a dark comedy about uh, toxic masculinity, um, artistic striving, economic struggle uh, in in New York City a lot and kind of all of the really difficult lessons about love that I learned in my 20s um, the hard way. <laughs> so, uh, and it's, it takes place in um, between 2014 and 2016 and ends more or less with the election of Donald Trump. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, and I was, I mentioned to you earlier, like when I was writing this was not a fun uh, path to, to publication. This was a, a, the kind of novel that I trudged through and um, it went through like maybe seven or eight drafts. And in the beginning, what I did was, I mean, I moved it from you know third person to first person, from past tense to present tense. And, and one of the things I did that I think is a common pitfall with authors who are just trying to figure out what, the story, what their story is, is I dumped all of the backstory for my protagonist, um, Nina, at the very beginning of the novel. And I just kind of expected my reader to remember all of the important things that happened to her later, you know, much later when, um, when they came up again, um, or not even when they came up again, but just, you know, to kind of draw the connections across like 200 pages that I hadn't even really figured out how to draw myself. So in later drafts, I ended up having to cut a lot of that backstory and it just turned into um, garbage on my hard drive until uh, I finished the novel and the coronavirus pandemic uh, hit and my partner and I um, moved back in with my family and we've all been in quarantine, like working from home in this very silent house where like, I'm not teaching, it's the summer. So I'm like, what am I doing here? It's really surreal time. And, and it, it occurred to me that actually in a, in a time like this, it might feel good to go back and make some sense of the past um, when it seems as if there's no sense to be made of the present or the, and no way to imagine the future. Um, so I went digging through my hard drive and, um, and was pulling out really, really old material. Some of it was like 10 years old, actually, um, from my, my MFA thesis. And, and I also went back and began looking at some of the material that I cut from True Love. And I just began turning them into short stories. Um, I think short stories are a really good opportunity for people to practice technique um, because it's a confined space. You know, you can, you have an idea and you can quickly execute it. Um, maybe it's easier to see the patterns in 20 pages as opposed to 200 pages. Right. So, yeah. So I've just been having fun with, with that. It feels good after working for so long on a book that was giving me so much trouble um, to finish something quickly, you know? Yeah. So that's my tip. <laughs> I think um, that is a um, super hopeful way to think about backstory. I know um, with so many students and myself included, you write all of this backstory and then you realize, oh, this was actually just for me for this book, right? It doesn't go mm -hmm. in this book. It's slowing mm -hmm. down the forward momentum of the front story. Um, mm -hmm. So to think about taking, removing that and then writing um, short stories from it, I think is really yeah. good. I wonder, I wonder, are they short stories still based on those same characters? So is, is so if I read True Love in seven days, no, not that, in, in, in uh, three weeks when it comes out. Um, and then I found your um, short stories. Would they be about the same character? Or would no, they? Not, not necess no, probably not necessarily, no. I think I'm done with Nina. I think I've figured everything out about Nina that I need to figure out now. And um, actually, the reason I, I cut those stories was because they just didn't really, they didn't fit with Nina. It wasn't actually Nina that I was writing about, I realized. Um, and... I mean, yeah, so something else I've realized about backstory 
is that oftentimes it's like these um, sort of vignettes that strike you as significant in this character's past, um, but and they might exist somewhere in that character's past, but it's not significant to the story you're telling in this novel. So, um, but they 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 exist as these as these little vignettes that have kind of their own timeline, right? And yeah, so it was it's been a great opportunity to actually um, find out how like you know how are they um how do they speak to themselves rather than how do they speak to true love you know yeah, yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. really interesting well thank you so much for taking the time to um, talk to us about your book and yeah thanks rachel yeah bye bye